This is the ELR 3.2 answer sheet for the Unit 3 study guide. In this one, we're talking about how gravity affects the motion of objects, and this ELR is almost identical to the previous ELR. In fact, we're going to be using the same equation quite a bit. The only difference is that we have a permanent acceleration. In the last ELR, we talked about acceleration being something that could change if we're using like a car or a truck or a ball or who knows what. But in this one, gravity is always going to accelerate things at the exact same rate of 10 meters per second squared. And again, that's a rounded number. It's actually 9.8, and then the decimals go on and on. So for number one, we have a falling object dropped from an average acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. So we are on Earth, apparently, or some Earth-like planet. If an object falls from a tall building, how long will it take before it reaches a speed of 42 meters per second? So how long will it take means that we are solving for time. The equation we're going to use, like I said, is the exact same from before, change in velocity over and change in time. And we're going to plug in things much like we did in the last ELR as well. Except this time, we know what our acceleration is. We know that it's 10. Our change in velocity, since the ball is starting at the top of this building, um, we're assuming from rest, and it's going to speed up to 42 meters per second. Our change in velocity is going to be 42, and we're solving for time. We want to know how long that's going to take. One of the biggest mistakes that I see is that people think that they can do 42 divided by 10, and um, they don't really understand the algebra of what's going on here, and sometimes they'll even do 10 divided by 42. I'm going to go through this little baby steps at a time, making sure that uh, we are doing the algebra correctly. So in order to get t by itself, first thing I want to do is get it off the bottom of this fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by t. When I do that, I'm going to rewrite. When I do that, I get... 10t on the left, and now it's just 42 on the right side. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 10, so I can get t by itself. And when I do that, I'll get t equals 4.2. Don't forget your units. We were solving for time, so that's seconds. So it's going to take 4.2 seconds to reach 42 meters per second. It's really handy that the number is 10 for this planet, but you should know that just in case I gave you maybe, let's say, how long would it take on Mars, where the gravity is not the same as Earth, and it's not quite a convenient number like 10, you should still be able to do these steps, even though on Earth the math is super, super easy. For number two, using the words inertia and mass to explain why gravity pulls on things with a different amount of force, but they still accelerate at the same time, I'm actually going to use words and pictures to describe this concept. Um, and I will also take advantage of the Brownie points, and I'm going to use Newton's second law as well. So I'm going to start with the idea of, like, let's say you have a really little ball and a much bigger ball, and um, they're both at rest, and you're going to drop them. So this much smaller ball, since it's an object at rest, um, it has very little inertia. So since it has so little inertia, um, it only needs a little force little force required in order to get this one going. However, this one has a lot more mass, so it has a lot more inertia. It's going to take more force required. And this is maybe a little bit easier to see, in my opinion, maybe not in yours, um, if I use the actual um, equation. So the equation is F equals MA. That's Newton's second law. I like to plug in some made-up numbers for this. And remember, gravity is an acceleration. And the question we're trying to say is, like this question number two, is really asking, like, why is acceleration the same for all objects? Why does gravity pull on things and speed them up at the same rate? Well, let's say that the mass of this giant ball is, let's say, 5. And so um, it's got a mass of 5, and um, we want to know how much force does it take to get that thing speeding up. Well, we, we already know from experimental data that everything does speed up at the same rate, so we know that it all speeds up at the rate of 10. Um, that's rounded again. So 5 times 10, it's going to require a push or a force of 50 newtons. So that's just Newton's second law. Force is mass times acceleration. So this bigger mass requires more of a push. Well, that smaller ball that we were talking about, let's say that it only has a mass of 2, and we know from experimental data that it also accelerates at a rate of 10. Well, gravity is pulling on that thing with much less force, 20 newtons. So I think that's kind of a crazy cool thing about the universe is that it operates in such a way that everything is going to get a different pull just depending on what its mass is, but it's going to get the exact right amount of pull so that everything accelerates at the same rate. 
for number three. Number three is all about if we throw a ball straight up in the air. Um, um, and, and it's leaving at a velocity of 45. How long is it going to take to reach the top? How long is it going to take to come back down? And this is not what it shows on your paper. The real question is, is how fast is it going, and that's not right, after six seconds into the trip? So we're going to solve all three parts of this. Um, but I'd like to start with a little bit of a sketch. So I'm imagining this ball is going to be thrown up into the air. It's going to have a velocity here of 45 meters per second. It's going to take some amount of time to get here to the very tippy top. Up at the top, I know that its velocity is going to be 0 meters per second because it's going to stop going up before it can start coming back down. Um, and I've got to solve for after 6 seconds. Um, that's going to come last. So first part is how long is it going to take to reach the top of its path? Well, you could go back and do the acceleration as change in velocity over change in time and solve for time given the starting velocity and ending velocity and you would totally get the answer just fine. But I want to try this another route just in case um, you are also thinking about it this way. And here's the route that I think about it. I go, I'm just going to write this out. So gravity steals 10 meters per second every single second. In other words, if I start with 45, every second along the way, gravity is going to knock down 10 of that until I get down to zero. So in other words, like after one second, I'm going to be down to 35 meters per second. Another second later, I'm going to be down to 25 meters per second, and so on and so on until I get to the top of my curve. So since 10 is a nice and neat round number, I know that after four seconds, I'll be with five meters per second left. It's just going to take me another half second after that. So for the first part, how long is it going to take? It's going to take four and a half seconds. And if you solved this the other route with this equation, um, you, are, you should be getting the exact same answer. The next part says, how long is it going to take to come back down? Well, if you remember back from class, um, every time that gravity is taking away 10 on its way up, once it turns around and comes back down, it's going to be adding 10 again, and it's actually going to take the exact same amount of time to go back down, assuming no air friction, which we are assuming that. So same for coming back down, 4.5 seconds to come back down. The last part is probably the hardest part. How fast is it going after 6 seconds? Well, for this one, I am going to use the actual equation for this because I think that that's going to help a little bit more. But remember how we said at the very top of the peak that it's going zero? That's going to be the part that helps us the most. So I'm going to set up my equation. Acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. And we know that the acceleration this time, I'm going to be really careful with my signs. Since we have an object that's changing direction, um, gravity is an acceleration that always points down. This 45 that they gave us was a positive 45 to begin with. And so gravity was taking away from that, which means that gravity must be a negative thing since it's taking away from the positive number. So when I substitute into this equation, gravity is a negative 10, because it's pulling down. Now we're going to do change in velocity. I know that it's going to be coming back down. It's going to go, it'll be going for 6 seconds. And I'm solving for how fast it's going. So I'm solving for one of the velocities. And actually, I'm solving for how fast is it going after 6. So that's a final. I want velocity final. And I know that at the top of the peak, it's going 0, so minus 0. So now here's the part that's maybe the trickiest. At the top of the peak, that was after 4 and a half seconds. We solved that at the beginning of this question. And we're saying after 6 seconds, that's 1 and a half seconds later. So the time between the top of the peak and the, the 6 second mark, that's 1 and a half seconds from here to somewhere over here on our little, our little picture. Now we have everything we need to solve. So um, I'm going to get velocity final by itself by multiplying both sides by 1 and a half. When I do that, don't forget your negative signs, I'm going to get negative 15 equals velocity final minus 0. And the minus 0 part goes away. So, whoops, so there we have our answer. I lost my 5. Velocity final is negative 15. Don't forget your units, meters per second.